Hello and welcome to this episode of the best Gundam models period where today I'll show you how to paint a Tyranid Termagant in the colors of High Fleet Leviathan. First thing we need to do is prime our model. Uh, I like to use Vallejo Black Surface Primer. That is because the black one is thicker than the gray one so it's perfect for brushing on while the gray one will just slide right off the model. So first we want to shake our paint and put a few drops onto our palette. I'll be using a pretty old uh, Citadel medium layer brush that has seen better days to prime this model. It's perfect for, for doing an all over base coater all over prime job. The primer doesn't need to be thinned at all as it's thin enough already. Now this primer, unlike spray primers, does take a few hours to cure. So, once you're done priming, just sit back, relax, have a cold beer, and wait, wait for the primer to cure. Now, this box comes with nine other termagants, as well as a ripper swarm. So it's good to get them all primed at the same time. You'll also want to prime the base at the same time. So, so that any texture paint or basing material will have an easier time sticking. Uh, I'll prime the rest of these little guys off camera. And a few hours later, we'll be back with the rest of this review. All right, mm -hmm. people, it's been a few hours. The primer's cured enough that you can go ahead and paint. Here's our miniature all in black. Well, first thing we're going to paint is the skin. So we're going to take our pot of wraith bone and we're going to give it a good shake make sure it's all mixed up and we'll take our base coating brush which has seen some better days we're going to put some on our palette Now you'll want to thin this down. Just so that it goes on smoothly and doesn't clog up any detail. And we're going to paint this all over the skin. If you, you hit the chitin or the carapace it's, or the hooves, it's not a problem. Just want to roughly base coat that in. Since we thinned it down, it'll dry a little patchy, so you just put on a second thin coat. And there's our termagant with uh, two thinned coats of wraith bone. Some parts needed a third coat, but it's got a nice even finish. Now our next step, I'm going to use Citadel Contrast Magos Purple. I'm going to shake it up 
Some of the contrasts tend to develop sediment on the bottom. This one doesn't. Uh, it's the heavier pigments in the paint separating. And those, those take a while to shake up and mix. But this one doesn't. We're going to take our brush. This is a WizKids Dungeons & Dragons base coating brush. And we're going to put this in our palette. Uh, we'll take one more brushful. We're going to slather it all over the skin of our termagant. And we want it to be nice and even. You see it pooling anywhere, like down here. Just move your brush in and absorb it and redistribute it elsewhere on the model. All right, so here is our termagant after applying the Magos Purple contrast paint. It's looking like a, it's looking rather pinkish, but we are going to fix that with some dry brushing of Wraithbone. Dry brushing is a way of getting a relatively smooth highlight. And what you do is you just get some paint on the end of your dry brush. This is a Citadel small dry brush. This is a Citadel small dry brush. And you just work it into the bristles. Um, some paper towel, get most of it off, and we start applying it to the model. After our first dry brush, your termagant should look something like this. Now what we are going to do is add another dry brush layer, uh, not quite as heavy as the previous one. We're going to use Pallid Witch Flesh. First thing you want to do is shake your paint. And you want to get some on the tip of your brush and work it into the bristles. Now going lighter, you just want to hit you know tops of surfaces where, where light would catch. Like on, on the tail and around the, these vent parts on the leg. Okay. Now, our second dry brush brought out some of those edges a little bit more. Now, this next step is optional. If you're painting a horde of termagants, you can certainly skip this part for convenience's sake. But we're going to do an edge highlight of white scar. Or you can use any pure white paint that you want, such as matte white from the Army Painter. And for this, I'll be using my size double zero brush from Artist Opus. Yeah. Alright, now areas you'll want to edge highlight would. Whoop. It would be around the vents here. Just to use the tip of your brush. And around here on the top of the leg. You don't need to do very many edge highlights. Just the most prominent edges. Some areas you can use the side of your brush. Here are the edge highlights that I did in pure white. I also took the liberty of dotting in the eyes with the pure white. And now we are going to do two base coats. We will do the purple carapace and the red hooves and claws as well as the red gun.
and start by shaking up our purple. You're using Nagaroth Night, which is a very dark, saturated purple. I once again will be using the Dungeons and Dragons base brush. Now, Nagaroth Knight is a fairly thin paint, so the black undercoat will help. You just want to be careful around those skin parts that we finished. You want to let your first coat dry fully before applying a second coat. But since we thinned our paints, it's all already dried on some parts of the carapace, so we can return and apply a second coat of our Nagaroth Knight. Here's what your model should look like after applying Nagaroth Knight to the armor plates, including the armor plates on the front and back of the gun. Our next step is to apply corn red to the gun, claws, and hooves. This is a Citadel small layer brush that I shall use to paint these areas because they are quite small and fiddly. Now, corn red has very good coverage, so we'll only need two thin coats. Let's start with the gun. You just, you just want to avoid his fingers. That's my dog. It's whining. Alright, so after painting these areas, your termagant should look like this. The next thing we are going to do is apply a black wash to the red and purple areas. I will be using Citadel's Nuln Oil, but you can use any black wash for this. And as always, you'll want to shake your paint before using it. I'm again returning to the Dungeons and Dragons brush. You'll want to get a healthy amount of this on your palette. I say three brushfuls should be enough. And we're using a palette just to make sure we don't have our brush overloaded. Once the wash is dry, your model should look like this. With the recesses, in the purple and red areas all darkened down. Now it is time to highlight. We'll start by highlighting the purple. And our first color is Zarius purple. And so we're going to do lines going up down each plate. Now the lines won't be very obvious with the Zarius purple on top of the Nagaroth Knight, but this will help build up the texture as we add more highlights with brighter and brighter colors. Okay. Here is what your model should look like after 
the Zarius purple highlights. Uh, hasn't made a huge difference. But we are going to change that. Our next color is Gene Steeler purple. As always, you want to shake it. And we're going to do some more lines down the carapace, but we will do even fewer of them. After doing the Gene Steeler purple, the model should look like this. This next step is optional for termagants and other numerous creatures that'll be in a numerous squad, but for your larger monsters and characters like the winged Tyranid Prime, you can take the highlights an extra step further and use Slanesh Gray to do a final highlight. Okay. Now. After the Slanesh Gray stage, this is what your model should look like. And we are done with the purple. The next step is to highlight the red areas, which are the gun, the hooves, and the claws. So the color we're going to need for that is Mephiston Red. After our first round of red highlights, this is what your model should look like. Our next stage is to highlight just the hooves and claws with Evil Sun Scarlet. And this is Evil Sun Scarlet here. It's a bit brighter than Mephiston Red. Now we'll do the other side of the claws. This is what your model should look like after that round of highlights. The next step will be to base coat the vent areas on the arms and legs, as well as the tubes connecting the arm to the gun and the eye in the gun with wraith bone in preparation for some contrast paints. Sometimes it helps to brace your hands together. It'll reduce the shakiness. And here we have those areas base coated in wraith bone. Our next step will be to apply Gilliman Flesh Contrast on the vents on the gun and the tubes connecting the arm to the gun. And this is what your model should look like with the Gunnelman Flesh Contrast applied. The next step will be to apply some Volupus Pink to the vents and the joints in the armor on the body. But we're not going to use straight Volupus Pink. We are going to mix it 2 to 1 contrast medium to Volupus Pink because Volupus Pink is a very, very strong color. 
So you want to apply your medium first to avoid contamination. There's one brush full. There's two. Make sure our brush is not overloaded. And we shall apply it. You want to apply this to the tongue as well. After doing the volupis pink and contrast medium mixture, your model should look like this. We're nearing the home stretch here. Our next step will be to highlight the volupis pink areas with Emperor's Children. And here's Emperor's Children's very bright pink. This is what your model should look like after doing the Emperor's Children step. Next, we shall highlight the flesh colored parts with Kislev Flesh, which is a nice bright skin tone. And there we go. Our termagant is nearly finished. All right. Our next step is to paint the eyes. We will be using Ayandin Yellow Contrast by Citadel. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of sediment at the bottom of this paint jar. So we'll need to do a lot of shaking to get it mixed. Our contrast is now a mix. We shall apply it to our palette. Again, we don't need very much because we're just doing the eyes. Make sure your brush is not overloaded. We'll shall apply this to the eyes on the head and the eye on the gun. And here is what our model looks like. The end in yellow hasn't dried yet, but while it's drying, we can go out and correct any mistakes that we made, such as this little blob on his shoulder. And we shall touch that up with pallid witch flesh. And here is our termagant all finished. I hope you found this tutorial useful and helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.